everyone! Today I'm going to teach you the blanket stitch applique process of my Wise Owl shopping bag pattern. Even if you're brand new to sewing, you can do this, so don't be afraid. And know that this is the first of a two-part video series on this actual bag because there's just so much information for you to learn. I want you to know that I really enjoyed making this pattern for you and I hope that you enjoy learning how to make it. The first thing that we're going to do is refer to the pattern for all the measurements and get all of your um, fabric selected. It takes about a half a yard of material for the main body of the bag. So um, after you've cut your pieces out, to, we first want to find center on the diagonal. So we're going to go ahead and fold the fabric in half to find center and then simply press your material. And then just to make sure that we don't end up having a bunch of puckers when we do applique, we're going to stabilize the main body of the material using our stabilizer called Hold Light. And it is called that because if you can see it's a very lightweight stabilizer. It doesn't seem as though it would do much at all, but it is fabulous for locking the bias in your material. And it doesn't require a high temperature in order to use it, so it's perfect for your minkies and polar fleeces and other materials that normally can't withstand the high temperatures normally used when using fusible interfacing. So this is a, a very, I have it set on synthetic on my iron, and we just press, and it is the shiny side of the stabilizer to the iron. So you don't have to worry about your fabric sticking to the sewing machine as you spin around and follow the, the nice little tiny shapes that you do when doing machine applique. So next step is to fold the fabric and we have about six inches and iron the fabric. That is where the bird is going to be perched. Next step is to get the perch ready. It is a two and a half inch wide strip. I fold the fabric in half first to find the center and then open the fabric up and bring your edges together in that to the center line that you pressed. And then go ahead and press your fabric. Now we're going to position the perch on the fabric using the, the fold that we pressed in the material to show where the bird is going to sit. On this particular bag, I've decided to do a double-sided bag. I already created one of the owls and I want to make it so that the perches line up on both top and bottom or front and back of the bag. And I've already marked this side of the, of the bag to match on the opposite side of the, the bag. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to kind of swoop this so that it has a gentle curve in it. And then just use the basting glue put a little bit on, on both sides and then slide your finger gently across it. Really light touch. Do not push down hard because you want to keep the glue actually on that surface of the material. You don't want to push it through. And then we go ahead and line up the perch. So you can see I'm gradually doing this, not gluing all the way down, just doing a few inches at a time. Spread out a little glue. Slide your fingers across it gently, very light touch, and start working the fabric, kind of pivoting it to the other side. Pull it back again. So you can see how relaxing this is. It's, it's much easier to do this than it is to, to, to use a bunch of pins and hope that the fabric doesn't pucker when you go and uh, start to make that, fur that fabric curve like this. So now that we have our perch in position, we're going to go ahead and uh, discuss getting the owl pieces ready. Before tracing, know that I took the time to flip the patterns over so you don't have to do that. You don't have to trace through the paper and then trace, saving you a step. So you just trace right on the right side of the pattern and go ahead and use a um, a sharpie marker for that. And it's a good idea to trace them grouped together so that you can take this piece now and then iron it to the main body of fabric. When you go to cut out your pieces, make sure that you don't cut to the line, that you leave a little piece staggered over so that when you go to cut your actual fabric after ironing it on, 
you can uh, you'll have a nice clean sharp edge and you won't have to worry about the fusible webbing hitting the iron either this is a really nice way of fussy cutting to create to look at your fabric as a pattern and how would that look as a wing on the owl now we're going to peel off the release liner of some of the pieces follow the pattern to know which pieces to peel off first I actually leave the paper release liner on the body and the head until after I've applied all the smaller pieces on top. Before beginning to applique, make, do a little inspection all the way around the edges of the actual owl to make sure there's no pieces that aren't perfectly pressed. I've selected a matching bobbin thread and needle thread, 40 weight polyester for this, and an 8012 universal needle. And the first thing that we're going to do is always stitch the piece that's farthest away first, so we're going to go ahead and start with the perch. You'll notice that I'm holding the fabric up rather and you don't see my hands holding, holding the fabric down. If you hold the fabric on the top, it, it hinders the feeding of the material. So you want to make sure that you keep a very light touch, if any touch at all, when doing blanket stitch applique or any type of applique. I'm watching the front of the satin edge foot rather than the sewing machine needle. It'd be really hard to see that needle as fast as it's moving, wouldn't it? And that's why most people sit really close to their work when they work on projects like this. Go all the way to the end. And we don't have to tie off because this will be secured with a seam allowance when we go to sew the bag together. Spin it around and we'll do the other side. Okay, so when you start getting closer to pieces that are overlapping, you're going to need to stop the machine. And uh, it can get, it can be very easy if you have your needle set with a with the button to have the needle always stop down. It can be very easy for your sewing machine to accidentally go a few stitches past and then you're ending up stitching right onto that smaller piece. So. I prefer to always leave my needle so that it is in the up position and then when I desire to lower it I then push the button to lower it and that way I'm never surprised by the machine sewing a few stitches past the fabric that I'm going to. And I'm also going to reduce the sewing machine speed control when I get near smaller pieces or get near pieces where I'm approaching so that I don't accidentally push too hard on the foot control and then inadvertently go into that piece. Come up to the next area. Lower the needle with the hand wheel, and so you know that your needle is going to go right off the edge of the applique. Tie a knot. Now, if you don't have a, a knot stitch on your machine, make sure you have a long piece of thread so that you can take it through with a hand sewing needle to secure it at the end. Keeping my speed control on slow because I have to approach another piece. Slow down, take your time, tie a knot. Now the next step is to choose which piece to applique first or to stitch down first. And if you always remember that whatever is furthest away is what you stitch first, then that helps you. This is the furthest away, so I'm going to go ahead now and bring the needle down so that it is right off the edge of the body. And I've already selected a narrower blanket stitch than I used here and on this machine it's I'm gonna I'm using a two stitch length or a stitch width but I think I'm gonna I think I yeah two is fine and I'm also shortening the stitch length so the stitches come more often primarily because if you don't do that when you go around a curve like this it uh, won't look as good so Another thing to do is whenever you're actually applying on smaller pieces to lower your speed control so you're not surprised when your sewing machine suddenly speeds up on you. Now, this is one time you'll see me run the machine slower. This stitch goes forward, back, forward, over, over, forward, back, forward, over, and that's a lot of stitches to keep track of. So what I do is only pay attention to the stitch that's going off the edge. And when the needle is um, off the edge is the only time I lower the needle. And then you can pivot your material. 
So this is one time when we are going to need to stop and pivot. As soon as you start seeing that the guide on the foot is separated from the material, you want to lower the needle and swing the fabric back around until it touches the white part of the guide. So this is right now tone on tone fabric. It would be really hard for me to see those two colors. I would normally have to get my face right up on it, but the uh, guide helps me to not have to do that. Needle down, pay attention to which position it's going in, front or back, or forward or, or in reverse. And if you say it out loud to yourself, left, right, forward, back, forward, left, right, forward, back, and then you stop in the forward, then you won't be surprised when it goes backward instead of forward. And now I'm ready to tie a knot. See how nicely I was able to follow along right along that edge even though the colors got really close to one another right around here. I'm going to go ahead and come over to this area and do the rest of the body. Move it a little bit, tie another knot. Because there's going to be some groceries and other items stuffed into this bag, we want to make sure that the ends are secure. Which piece do you think is next. You guessed it, the belly. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me in real time do this whole thing, so I'm going to continue as I instructed you on the body and the belly until we get to the tinier pieces. So I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so now I have an area where I can't put another blanket stitch or it'll make like a V shape in there. So what I'm going to do is walk it, which is what I call turning the hand wheel. And instead of allowing that stitch to swing out, I'm now going to move the fabric over and, and be the feed dogs, in other words. Now I'm going to go back. So I'm mimicking the blanket stitch but not allowing it to stitch where it's programmed. Instead, I'm forming a heavy line right along the outside of that tip of the wing, and this makes it look a lot better than having a stitch randomly placed. It takes a little while to go around those points when you do that, but it's so worth it. In the end, when your project's being admired by everybody, and Everybody's wondering how you manage to always be off the edge and not end up with messy stitches so you can see how nice that turned out right there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and repeat that on the other wing and keep on going.
done with the applique process. And all that's left is to remove the stabilizer from the back and you simply peel, peel it off and then pull kind of diagonally toward the stitch that went off the edge. And there may be some stabilizer remaining when you're finished, but remember this is the inside of a bag and uh, I'm not sure if anybody should be looking that closely to the inside of your shopping bag. If you want to be really precise and removing it all, then get out your tweezers and pull toward the stitch to remove it. But it's a strong enough stitch to where it shouldn't rip the stitches out for you to remove the stabilizer. Personally, I just remove the outer area and left the owl stabilized. Since nobody's going to be looking in my bag except for you guys when you see it at shows. And there we have completed our blanket stitch applique lesson for this, the first of a two part video series on my owl shopping bag. I hope that you enjoyed uh, learning this process and if you liked what you saw be sure to click the like button below and subscribe so that you don't miss out when the second part of this pattern comes out where I teach you how to construct the bag and turn it into the shopping bag you see here. Thanks for watching.